Okay, so this is the answer key from the homework from last night. So it says, describe the possible solutions of a system consisting of two quadratic equations. Well, um, first one would be where one, remember they're facing, one's facing up, one's facing down. So if one's facing up, one's facing down, and they don't intersect, that's gonna be zero solutions or no solution. You can also have it where they touch at the vertices, and that would give us one solution. And the last one is where one's facing up, one's facing down, and they intersect at two points, which would be two solutions. Um, solve the system by graphing, check your solutions. So you're gonna see me graph these by hand. Um, you can definitely put those in Desmos and double check it. So let's go ahead and start with the uh, linear line first. So for the linear line, uh, we have a y-intercept at two. So I'm gonna go to my y-intercept of two, and we have right there. My, my, now my slope is one divided by one. So I go up one, right one to make my line. So I go all the way to the end of the graph, and then I go backwards, down one, left one. And then I'm gonna connect my points. And there is my first line. And my second one is a quadratic function. So for the quadratic function, I'll do this in green. Now this is in vertex form. So this is A, H, and K. So for my vertex, I can see that my vertex is at negative two comma zero. So therefore I can plot a point at negative two zero and I see they already intersect there, so that's gonna be one solution. Um, the A value is 0.5. So when I do the one, three, five, seven, I'm gonna multiply each one by 0.5, which is the same as one half. But... So one times 0.5 is one half. Um, actually, let me keep that as a 0.5. Uh, three times 0.5 is 1.5, five times 0.5 is 2.5, and seven times 0.5 is 3.5. Now, once again, you can always, after you get your vertex, you can plug numbers in and get it, and also you can plug this into a graphing device. So I go right one and then up a half. From that half point I just made, I go right one and then I go up 1.5. So 0.5, one. From that point, I go right one and up 2.5. So right one, then one, two and a half. And then right one and then up 3.5. So that's a half, one, two, three. And you can do the same thing on the other side. So there's a half, there's a half, there's one, right, the left one and then one, two and a half. Then left one, then half, one, two, three. Then we trace our point to make the best curve that we can do. All right, and now those are my uh, quadratic function and my line. So I can see <clears throat> that they intersect at that point and this point, so that looks like negative two, zero. And zero two so those are my solutions right there negative two zero and zero two <coughs> all right for number three we're going to go and do the same thing let's go and change these colors up a little bit all right so these are two quadratic functions right here we had a quadratic or parabola in a line now we have two parabolas so for this one here once again it is vertex form um, we have a is one h is here and k is here. So opposite of that is, so my vertex is gonna be two comma zero. So I'm gonna plot that point there. And then from this one, we'll use the one, three, five, seven again. I guess we can do this right here real quick. So one, three, five, seven. And I'm gonna multiply by the a value, even though it is one. So that's one, three, five, seven. So from this point, it's positive, so we go right one, up one, right one, this is a positive three, so up three, uh, one, two, three, and then right one, up positive five, two, three, four, five, and we don't wanna go any further than that because the seven goes off the graph. So left one, one, then three, and then five, and then make our graph the best we can. And there's my first quadratic. Um, so for my second one, It'll be, oops, so let's color coordinate this a little bit better. 
this one was purple. Now the second one will be orange. All right, so for here, we're gonna have to find the vertex. So this is A, B, C, because it's in standard form. So I'm gonna use the axis of symmetry. <clears throat> X equals the opposite of B over two A. So the opposite of four is negative four over two times negative one, which is negative four over negative two, which is two. So we know x equals two. So for my vertex, we have two comma. Now we're just gonna plug our number in. So we have negative two squared plus four times two minus two. Two squared is four, negative four. Four times two is eight minus two, which gives us two. So two comma two. And that is right there. Now from here, once again, I'll use the one, three, five, seven. And once again, the A value, or actually the A value is different. It's negative one here. So that's negative one. So I'm multiplying each one of these by the negative one. And notice it's just flipping the sign. So right one, instead of going up one, negative one tells me to go down one. Right one, down three, one, two, three. Right one, down five, one, two, three, four, five. Same thing, left one, down one. Left one, down two, three. And then down five. Make our graph the best we can. And you should be able to see these two solutions right here. Um, our first one intersects, it appears to be at 1, 1. And the second one appears to be at 3, 1. And once again, you can verify these answers by graphing them in the Desmos or some graphing device you may have. And these are the two solutions that I came up with. All right, next ones are solving by substitution. All right, so for this first one here, Let's see, we're going to solve the second one. We're gonna add the two X over, so it's gonna be Y is equal to two X minus four. And I'm gonna cross this one out because I don't want to reuse it by accident. So now we're gonna use substitution. Since this one says Y equals, we're gonna substitute this expression in for Y. So when I rewrite this, it is two X squared plus four X minus, substituting my expression for Y, two X minus four equals negative three. 2x squared plus 4x. Now we're going to distribute this negative 1 across, so minus 2x plus 4. I'm going to combine our like terms, so 2x squared, 4x minus 2x is 2x plus 4 equals negative 3. Last, we'll add this 3 over to the other side. And I'm going to have to write this up here, so we get 2x squared plus 2x plus 7 is equal to 0. I'm going to go straight to the quadratic formula because when I look at this, I can see it's not factorable. So A is 2, B is 2, C is 7. So for my discriminant, we have B squared minus 4 times A times C. And that gives me negative 52. And we already know, um, I'll show you the work, but X equals opposite of B plus or minus the square root of negative 52. So that negative comes out and becomes an I over 2a, which is 4. And because of this i, and the fact that the discriminant was negative, that is going to give us a no solution. All right, so let's take a look at number 5 now. Um, for number 5, um, it says y equals x squared minus 1, and negative 7 equals negative x squared minus y. So this one's already solved for y. So we're gonna substitute this expression, the y equals, in for y in the second expression. So it's gonna be negative seven equals negative x squared minus, and we're gonna substitute in for y, x squared minus one. Negative seven equals negative x squared minus x squared, and don't forget to distribute to the minus one, which becomes positive one. Negative seven equals negative two x squared plus one. Um, at this point, I like to keep my x squared positive, so I'm gonna add two x squared here, over here, and I'm gonna add the seven as well. So I'm gonna knock this out in one step here. So the sevens cancel, and I have two x squared. Uh, the two x squareds cancel, and one plus seven is eight. So let's go ahead and rewrite this up here. So we have two x squared is equal to eight. So we're gonna solve by square roots. First, we can divide both sides by two to isolate x squared. And then last, we take the square root to isolate x, and the square root of four is two, 
but don't forget to put your plus and minus. All right, so now we've only found half of the solution because we know that it's an ordered pair. So now we're gonna do x is equal to two and x is equal to negative two. So we're gonna substitute it into this expression just because it looks a little bit, it's already solved for y, so y equals two squared minus one, y equals four minus one, which is three. So my ordered pair is x comma y, so two comma three. Second one, do the exact same thing, y equals negative two in parentheses squared minus one. Uh, negative two squared is four minus one, which is also three. And this solution is negative two comma three. So they're not the same because the x values are the same, the y values happen to be the same. All right, let's take a look at number six and number seven. So for number six, um, it does say to solve it by elimination. So we just look for variables that are opposite so that we can make opposites. In this case, it's straightforward. The y's are already opposites of each other. So we are going to combine these here. So we're gonna add them. We're just combining. So two x squared plus nothing is two x squared. Negative three x plus negative one x is negative four x. The y's do cancel. And negative five plus five is zero. So we talked about this in the notes where if there is no c value, there is a common factor of at least the x, but we also can see that two and four are divisible by two. So our GCF here is two x, <clears throat> leaving me with x minus two, right? Two x times x is two x squared. Two x times negative two is negative four x, <clears throat> equal to zero. Now we take each factor and set it equal to zero. So my first factor is two x equals zero, and my second one is x minus two equals zero. So for the first one, I'm just gonna divide both sides by two, and x is equal to zero. <clears throat> for the second one, we're going to add 2 to each side, and x equals 2. So now we're going to find our corresponding y values. So now we have, let's go ahead and substitute it into this expression here, because it's linear and it just seems smaller. Um, so negative 0 plus y is equal to 5. We don't need the negative 0, so y equals 5. So my ordered pair is x is 0, y is 5. Here we plug in the two, so negative two plus y is equal to five. We're gonna go ahead and add that two to the other side. Y equals two, seven, so it's two comma seven. And once again, when you get answers, you can verify them by substituting, substituting x and y back into these and making sure it satisfies both of them. Also, you can double check your work by graphing it, but once again, you must have the algebraic work to support your answers. All right, now we're down to the last one here. Um, once again, we are going to solve it by elimination, so we're looking for opposites. And once again, the y's are opposite of each other, so we can cross those out. Uh, negative 3x squared minus 3x squared. Let me put a line here so I can see the difference between them. So we are adding these together. So negative 3x squared plus negative 3x squared is negative 6x squared. The y's do cancel. The negative 18x and positive 18x cancel as well. And then 29 minus 25 is 4. From here, to isolate x squared, we can divide by negative six. So notice I am solving by square roots. So x squared is equal to negative two thirds. We take the square root of both sides. Don't forget plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus i square root of two thirds. Now, usually I would simplify this and rationalize the denominator, but since I have this i right here, we already know that that's gonna be a no solution. <clears throat>